Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AxesOfTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, having a great weekend. Uh, spring is finally coming up. God, I need this sun to come out and get some warmer temperatures. Again, God bless all of us who live in the Northeast, in Canada, everywhere that is cold weather is just enough. It's just absolutely enough. And uh, a couple of weeks I'm going on vacation. I need sun like a fish needs water. So hopefully you guys having a great uh, weekend. Hopefully you guys are trading well. Uh, so let's talk about the markets. Welcome all you guys who are joining us on a weekly basis via StockTwits, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and of course uh, all our uh, faithful followers on Twitter. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, so again, we, we do these weekend updates um, for the point of the trader. Okay, a again, like I say this every single week that there's a million websites out there that will tell you about what's going on with the fed and you know how they, you know that they're, gonna, they're not going to raise rates anymore and then they're going to cut rates and growth is slowing and powell and this and that the other thing again we're speaking from the traders point of view okay we're, we're speaking from the traders point of view there's thirty thousand other sites more than happy you can you can go on any site and read exactly what happened last week we're talking about from the traders point of view how it affects us how it emotionally affects us how it technically affects us and how can we get better processing all the information and moving forward? So Friday was a very aggressive day to the downside. Okay, and before we, you know, before we even talk about Friday's session, um, I, I think one of the one of the best questions, and I was asked this. I always ask to get this question always towards the top or towards the bottom. And again, by no means am I saying this is the top or this is a reversal for anything. This is just a common question, and. If you guys remember on the FOMC day on Wednesday, okay, the NASDAQ futures, I think, let's see, if we go back to Wednesday, if we go back to Wednesday, you'll see here. Um, so the NASDAQ futures on Wednesday session went all the way, all the way down. They came in really, really aggressively into the close. And what happened was, if you notice all the stocks like uh, Amazon and Netflix, um, you know, Apple, you know, they all got stronger and there was no greater sentiment. There's no greater clue what's going to happen next and how the stocks react when there is a speed bump. Right. And the next day, the Dow opened up, uh, excuse me, Dow opened down. And I said, based on last night's close and, you know, just the way there was so much strength and disconnect from the indexes into these beta names, all the values on the long side. And then the next day we had that, you know, 200 point rally. And somebody asked me, and I'm like, well, again, the market, you know, makes no sense. First of all, again, the market's never going to make any sense. There's no such thing as the more normal market or a normal environment. The market's never going to make any sense. Okay, the market's always going to do things that it's completely out of left field, and that's why I always say charts don't lie, but sometimes they don't tell you the truth either. So we had this big, big move. Sentiment was very, very strong. It was call buyers everywhere, sweeps everywhere, and and again, I get this question. Well, Dan, like, what is you know what is the what are the bears finally going to do? What do they need to do for this market to stop going up? And I turned around and I said, "Well, stocks just got you know stocks just need to stop going up." That's right. This is the million dollar advice you're getting from me right now. Realistically, it's that simple. Stocks needed to stop going up. And before you turn around and say, well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Of course, stocks need to stop going up before they go down. But there's actually a, a, a method to this madness. If you saw what happened on Friday, actually going back to even Thursday's session, okay, there's one thing I started noticing, okay, I started seeing a lot of call buying, okay, a lot of call buying in names that had pretty big runs, right? Uh, Amazon's, Netflix, whatever the case may be, big, big call buying coming in, middle of the day, sweeps, sweeps, sweeps. And I started noticing that, well, the stocks stopped going higher, right? They just didn't get that big oomph. Matter of fact, it took, if you guys remember, I usually don't trade a lot in the afternoons, but there were two really aggressive pivots on Thursday, okay, both Tesla and Netflix. But the one thing that, if you remember what happened on Netflix, 
for the whole day, right? If you guys remember, the stock just couldn't rally. The market was up like 200 points. It just couldn't rally and finally woke up towards the end of the day. Did they finally clean up a sweep? Did they finally clean up a seller? Again, we don't know. But all I kept on seeing was that, again, aggressive option flow coming in. And again, I started using these sweeps um, you know, to, to, to gauge how strong a pivot's gonna be if it, if it uh, confirms. It's been you know, working pretty well. But the one thing I kept on noticing was, well, the stocks are not really rallying, okay? And not only are they not rallying for uh, in the money sweeps, they stopped rallying out of the money sweeps. So for example, I saw a sweep on multiple sweeps, okay? Multiple sweeps on Tesla, for example, on Thursday. This is right after another, after another, after another. They kept on coming in with size. $500,000, $700,000, $300,000, $200,000, one after another on the April 300 calls. And you'd, you would assume with that aggressive buying, with this quote unquote type of environment, they would take the, you know, they would take the stock up and really, really explode it. The stock went up like about, about a dollar and change and then sold off three. The next day, right, which was Friday, we started seeing a little bit of a weaker open, okay? And the value, we saw a lot of value this week on bounce plays. I started playing these bounce plays a lot more, you know, um, NVIDIA, uh, Tesla, Netflix, stuff like that. And Friday was like the, the clue of all clues. If you guys remember, we didn't open down six, 700 points, okay? We opened up down very, very modest. And the, the core theory on any bull market or any bullish sentiment is when the market opens up down, opens down in a bull market or a bull sentiment and stocks come into the 60 minute channel, they usually spring right back. Okay. It's, it's the rule. It's like, you know, it's the rule. Any gap down is the value is always to the upside in the bear market. Any gap up, the value is always, uh, you know, always to, to, to the downside as well. So we started seeing call sweeps again. We saw the 400 calls being swept up on Netflix. We saw the 420s being swept up on Netflix. And all Netflix wanted to do was just go down. And the moral of the story is, you know, nobody could have forecasted uh, a rabid reversal rug pull on a Friday. Okay, I'm always on alert. And I always talk, talk about this in a morning strategy, especially when you have a really, really aggressive linear market. At any point, they could always pull the market. But nobody really expected it on Friday, right? Nobody, there was nothing outrageous. There was no materialistic um, catalyst for it. And what happened, what we saw was, in plainest English, stocks just stopped going up. And every single time there was a call sweep, it went lower. Another call sweep went lower until the buyers just stopped, okay? And you saw this really, really aggressive pull in a lot of these beta names. And you see, for example, a five minute view, and then again, I usually do on the 60, but you can see how aggressive throughout the morning this, this pull was on Netflix, how strong this pull was on Amazon. They just weren't going up at all. Uh, ironically, the, the one stock that was holding up was, was actually Tesla for the you know, majority of the day after the initial gap down. But you, you started seeing there was something different, right? Something different in the air, and the bids just weren't there rallies were very, very small. And the moral of the story is it was a buyer strike. Now, again, before everybody jumps out, you know, out of the window and says, well, this is just one day. It's not a big deal. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're not. But there is one thing that I noticed for a lot of these names going into this week. Okay. Let's look at the macro picture first. Okay. So here are the cues. Um, if anybody's ever watched the uh, Anything we ever did in the live webinar or watch the PS60 workshop, which by the way, guys, uh, you, you can watch the first hour of the PS60 workshop to see if pivots are right for you. Uh, click the link in the description or my, I have a tweet that's pinned on my Twitter account. You can get free access to a one hour, uh, one hour workshop uh, just to see if pivots are right for you, but that's not here nor there. But anything, you know, if you've ever watched it, we always talk about how stocks trade from supply to supply and demand and demand. It's just the natural course of these stocks. And the one thing I noticed somewhere in, you know, somewhere in the afternoon was every single stock tested their five-day moving average. Okay. I even tweeted about that. And the moral of the story is the five minute, the five-day moving average is not a really big, not a really big crowd loved, you know, embraced study. Okay. What's the five-day moving average? The shortest area of you can possibly study. But the one thing for me that I, I've always really admired about the five day 
it really reflects the, sh the really short-term sentiment. And if you're a day trader, okay, or you know, two, three days uh, swing trader, whatever the case may be, futures trader, you, you have to know which way the wind is blowing. So the five day for me represents short-term sentiment. And once we started seeing the test, for example, on Amazon in the five day bounce, Netflix bounced, uh, Alibaba bounced, Apple bounced, the question was, well, now Monday is gonna be very, very important because if they confirm, you know, we could go lower. The problem was the stock market didn't wait for Monday, okay? And if you notice all these charts, and again, guys, I've, I've always said this, that technical analysis is the purest form of a guide, okay? There is no room for interpretation. If you've been watching these videos for a very long time, you kind of know that. There, it, it's, not a, a, it's, it's, it's not a gray area. It's either going to happen or it's not. And if you notice what happened on, on a lot of these charts and you kind of see where things are going to play out, and I'll show you the 60-minute charts in a second. If you notice, the queues closed underneath the five-day moving average. Amazon closed underneath the five-day moving average. Netflix closed not only underneath the five, underneath the 10, but it tested the 20-day, right? You, you have a theme here going on here. Alibaba as well, right? Broke below everything, the 10, the 20. The only reason it held up was this Bollinger Band right here. You look at Google, right? Google, below the five-day moving average. And if, and if you go through all the NASDAQ 100 charts, you'll see exactly the same thing. And, you know, again, before we put the cart in front of the horse and turn around and say, well, this is a reversal, anybody buying up here is, and anybody's buying any type of dips on Monday is an idiot. No, 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 no. We can't put the cart in front of the horse. Our, the days of guessing, predicting, right, they're going to cost you a lot of money, okay? I'm not that smart. Nobody's that smart, okay? We could have an opinion, okay, which I obviously have an opinion. I'll share with you in a second. But I'm not that smart to turn around and say, well, Friday was the blow-off top of all tops. The market's going to go lower. Uh, you know, the stock up on, on guns, ammo, bread, water, you know, we're going into Armageddon. No, no, no. It's nothing like that, okay? All it is from face value is something for all of our antennas, whether you're a, a trader, a day trader, swing trader, futures trader, investor. You just have to have the an, antennas up that we at least, for at least the close from Friday session, pierced a technical, a very, very small, but very important, at least to me, technical damage area of the market that it could potentially lead to something more. Okay, that's it. Nobody's saying we're going to go down 6,000 points in the next 24 hours. All we're saying is if the price action confirms, right, if the price action confirms from Friday, we're going to have a problem. And again, this is not an opinion. This is called technical analysis confirmation. So very, very, you know, you, you really need to, you really need to kind of listen to what I'm saying, especially if you're a new trader, because again, the theory of buy the dip only works in a very rapid bull market. If you guys notice on Friday, there were no, there were no buyers. Okay. There were absolutely no buyers. Amazon doesn't just go in a linear line and run back three, four dollars, linear line, run back three, four dollars. There's just no buyers. And I said this all the time, be careful what you ask for, because this is the only business in the world when things are on sale, people don't want to buy. Okay? You got to really think about that and really take that into consideration if you're looking to buy the dips on uh, on Monday. Now, here's the good news, right? Here's the good news, and here's where Monday, at least for the moment, or at least for the first couple of candles, we can see a little bit stability in selling. If you guys notice, the queues are very, very close to the 10-day moving average. Again, stocks go from demand. Demand, 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 and so forth and so on. So we're like 50 cents away, okay? We're like 50 cents away from the 10-day moving average. The only, any close, okay, and this is a very, very important level, any close below 178 on the Qs, we're going down to 175, okay? Again, there is no room for interpretation. You could turn around and say, I'm wrong, this, that, the thing. That's fine. You don't, you, again, remember, I'm the king of the idiots. What the hell do I know? But any close below the 10-day moving average, we're going to have a problem. Now, if we gap down, okay, if we cap down below that 10 day moving average, it's very, very important that bulls in the, within the first hour, within the first two candles maximum, reclaim this 10 day. Because if not, you can see where the next measure potential is on and on and on. So you have to really, really, whatever type of trader you are, you really have to embrace what I'm saying here because, again, technical analysis is a very, very clear guide, okay? Whether you choose to appreciate it or choose to ignore it, it's going to, it's going to really 
echo, right? And really establish your, your P&L, okay? Because if you read the market wrong, the, the market's not going to give you a mulligan, right? You're not going to get a second chance to kind of rewrite history. You're either going to be right or you know, really, really wrong. And if you noticed how all the 60-minute channels are setting up, and again, if you're watching this for the first time, I trade 60-minute channels. They're all 60-minute channels. I use the five-minute to kind of gauge my entries sometimes if there's additional supply. But the clearest view for me is the 60-minute channel. And if you look at every single 60-minute channel, you got Tesla very, very tight. You got Amazon very, very tight. You got NVIDIA very, very tight. You got Alibaba very, very tight. You got Netflix very, very tight. Again, go through, 100, go through all the 100 stocks in the NASDAQ 100, and you're going to see pretty much the same thing over and over again, which basically tells you is if we start confirming Friday's price action, we're going to go lower. It's just, it's just the reality. And if your option, you guys, listen, and I, I'm telling you this, I'm not an options trader. I trade equity, but I'm pretty damn good at measured potential. If you look at measured potential, if you go on the daily charts, and we're not going to go through all of them today, but if you, if you go on daily charts, for example, on Amazon, and you go on, on that, for example, on Netflix, and you see where the next demand zones are, you can really establish a really good game plan uh, if you are an aggressive options trader. Again, if you believe in this theory that stocks go from supply to supply and demand to demand, let's take, for example, Amazon's chart, right? Right, so here's Amazon's chart. Okay, so here's Amazon's chart. So you know the next demand zone is 1730, right? So if Amazon gaps up for whatever reason, right? There's a green open and Amazon gaps up, you know, into the 70s and goes green to red, you know the next potential move is 30 points. So if you're an aggressive options trader, you say, well, wait a minute. Well, I believe in the theory that stocks go from supply to supply and demand to demand. So here's my next demand zone, which is 1730. It might not be a bad bet, okay, if you're an aggressive options trader to work out some sort of strategy that you are trying to get exposure into a potential measured move into the 1730s. Again, nobody's saying it's going down to 1580, but you never know, right? And if you're an options player, it's, it's a really, really good way to get the biggest bang for your buck for a measured potential, and it's not going to affect your, your, your day-to-day P&L, especially on the first day if you're going deep out of the money what a measure of potential to follow. So it's just something for you guys uh, to think about. Um, I thought the week was decent. Okay, I, I had one good day, a bunch of several. I had a bunch of decent days, and I had a day. I actually had a day I lost money, which I turned several trades. It was on Thursday, I believe. I took several trades from from positive trades into negative trades, which was again I had a brain fart. I have a brain fart sometimes, like like once every month. Once every month and a half. You guys remember this, like like a month, month and a half ago, I had a brain fart. I had exactly the same brain fart uh, on Thursday. I took, I was up like a dollar and change on Netflix. Somehow I turned it into a loss. Uh, I was up about a dollar on Tesla. Somehow I turned it into a loss. It was just like just a, such a weird, weird uh, day for me. But again, human beings, we're going to bleed. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to have losing days. It's just part, part of the cycle. Uh, Friday, I bounced back, made, made some money on Friday. But overall, the deep, the, the, the week was uh, was fine. There was nothing. I had one really good day, and everything else was just kind of fine. Um, it was I was finding more value in a weird way because the market was so linear. I personally was finding a lot more value on the bounce plays off the 60-minute channels. Um, which is kind of odd, you know, which is kind of odd for me because most of the time I will trade the natural pivot, but you have to, at some point, you have to start going to defense mode. And when you see a, a market, for example, when you see Amazon going from, you know, 16, what was it? From 16, from 1674 to, you know, to 1820, eventually you're going to turn around and say, well, you know, it's a little, you know, it's a little, a little overextended here. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm willing, willing to commit to fresh capital up here. So, um, I found the bounce plays uh, pretty effective. I know a lot of you guys uh, in the live webinar play that as well. Again, I don't. I usually don't post um, the bounce plays in the Twitter feed or the stock twits feed, only because I try to keep that into the natural pivot. But we do play these plays. Uh, we do play these things uh, all the time now. They're a very, very good risk reward area because we're literally trying to bounce these trades on the bottom uh, of the channel. Matter of fact, if you go. Uh, onto my Twitter feed, I think it was on on Tuesday, right? There was a bottom bounce on net on Tesla at 264, 265. They're right up 10. Okay, so just to, just to give you an idea how really aggressive these things are. So there was a lot of value in the bounce plays. And the most important thing going into this week is my opinion is well, if we start confirming 
Price action for Friday, we're going to go lower. So I'm going to give the bulls, okay, a little bit of a string, right, a little bit of rope at the start of the Mon Monday's trading session. Because, again, at the end of the day, you could turn around and say, well, Friday Friday was just like, you know, anomaly. It's not a big deal. You know, we, if, we, if we gap down and reverse and reclaim, we're going to go back higher. And, yeah, absolutely, that could definitely be a possibility. But, again, don't be naive to think we still can't start confirming Friday's price action and start – uh, going lower uh, as well. So here was Friday. Uh, here was Friday's uh, action in uh, the webinar. Uh, pizza never reclaimed. Uh, Papa John's never reclaimed. Uh, I, 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 the funny thing is, I liked this setup in the morning. Right, this is all pre-market. Uh, I really liked that setup in the morning. That three seventy-nine to the upside of Netflix. Obviously, it never. Uh, it never confirmed. So here's where things started really confirming. And, and guys, I guess for all you guys on the live webinar uh, in the stock to it, sometimes I'm dys dyslexic. Uh, this was obviously 368.50 for builds below. Obviously, it wasn't 168. Somebody emailed me and goes, hey, Dan, I'm still waiting for the 168 build. Yeah, me too. Um, so yeah, so a Boeing, and I know I know a lot of you guys figured it out, but it, so I, have to, I have to apologize. If you ever see me put in uh, a weird number into these feeds. Just, just, just double check with me. But this obviously was three sixty eight fifty. If it builds below, it can flush. And you know, here is the pivot on Boeing. If you look at the sixty minute channel on Boeing, uh, here is the three sixty eight fifty right over here. Three sixty eight fifty. You can see it here. Three sixty eight sixty five. Once it built three sixty eight fifty, even the first candle uh, was good for like four and a half five dollars. So that was pretty good. Uh, CHGG. You know, the funny thing is, it was a Citron hit piece, right? I put an initial low of $38 and, and then it spiked back to 38. So what I did was I put it in, I, I put in um, uh, a sell stop. I put in a sell stop. So if it got triggered to the way down, uh, I would get filled. The problem is I totally forgot about it. Like, like I literally totally forgot about it. I had an order in there and because the stock was so slow, it's like I looked down and I was like, what the hell is this thing? And it started moving down and I was like, I don't even want to be in this thing because it's so slow. But when I looked, I was, it was, I was in my favor for like 20 cents or so. So I just covered it up. Uh, if you guys got the bigger move, good job. But this was like the, one of the slowest Citron hit pieces. So I actually made money on this thing by accident. Uh, but again, sometimes, you know, you will, you know, luck does play a part. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, 80, 60, if it builds below, it could flush. Uh, here was NVIDIA. And again, for all you guys who are trading the option, these are really good value bets. So here is uh, NVIDIA. So here is the 80, 60, the, you know, the, the lowest candle in the rising support. Uh, once it broke uh, this 80, 60 and started to build, you can see the move, the move down here. Uh, Tesla. Here, oh, this, I messed up Tesla. I, I totally forgot about Tesla. I personally messed this up. So I shorted Tesla, okay? I shorted Tesla, and this is when the market was down like 300, okay? So I shorted Tesla 268-ish, right? I think I shorted Tesla 268-8-ish. Here's where I shorted it. I shorted it right here, right? So yeah, here it is. So I short Tesla right here, and the stock, they just, they, they just don't want to crack this thing. And the one thing that I do know about Tesla or any of these beta names if you're sitting them long, long enough, okay, and they just can't clean up a seller or clean up a buyer, you're going to get pillaged the, the other way. So I was in Tesla for like 15 minutes, and this thing is just trading in like a 30 cent range. I'm up 20 cents, I'm up 30 cents, I'm up 40 cents, I'm down 10 cents, I'm up 30 cents. And you can see these buyers just coming in. And I'm like, okay, listen, this thing doesn't crack now. I'm out of this thing, right? I'm out of this thing. I don't want to hear about it. I'm out of this thing. Safe and sorry. And, you know, it goes down like 40, 50 cents and then the buyer comes back. Damn buyer comes back and I was like, all right, I'm done with this thing. Um, I cover it up. Okay. It actually goes back up 70, 80 cents. The market starts rallying. Oh, I did the right thing. I did the right thing. There's a buyer in the crowd. I don't want to fight with a buyer. It's Friday, blah, 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 blah. I look down and then, you know, yeah, it happens. It happens. It happens. But again, we live with our choices, good or bad. Again, safe and sorry. Uh, it's not the money you make, it's the money you keep, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it sucks. It happened. Um, so that's that. Uh, if you did make money on this thing, good job. Uh, Facebook never confirmed. Um, yeah, so Amazon. Good job for all you guys who are uh, short Amazon. A lot of you guys are still short uh, over the weekend. Uh, we talked about a Kane. Kane, great job. Uh, Steve P, great job. I know you guys were short way before uh, anybody else, but uh, this was the big number, uh, 1776. The future started getting heavier. It could dump down and see 1760. Again, this is just you know technical analysis. And for all you guys who are trading, again, on, on the option side, look at the low of the day, right, guys? It traded right to 1760. So again, 
Technical analysis works. You just don't take these prices out of the air. Again, stocks trade from uh, you know uh, demand to demand to demand to demand to demand to demand on and on on and on. So uh, for all you guys who uh, did well on Friday, great job. If you're if if you um, if you haven't had a rough week, it only gets better. If you had a great week, quickly forget about it. The most important part is, and the one thing that I always say to every single trader, and I tweeted this out on uh, Saturday, okay? You're not cursed, you're not dumb, okay? Um, you don't have a dark cloud in front of you, okay, uh, above, above you. You are going through, and this is obviously to, uh, to newer traders, you are going through the same thing that every single trader has gone through before you, okay? These are stages in your trading career that you are going to have sleepless nights, you're gonna have self-doubts, you're gonna wanna quit trading 75 times a day, and you know what, guys? This is totally normal. And the one thing that I will tell you is if you want to be a professional trader, you have to embrace this, okay? You have to embrace these facts. You have to accept it, and you have to move forward because, again, there's no difference between me, and there's no difference between you, and there's no difference between Peter Lynch, and there's no difference between, uh, you know, David Einhorn. Everybody is in the same arena. Your account might be different. Your risk tolerance might be different but you're all looking at the same thing. And if you want to do this for uh, the rest of your life or your career, you really have to appreciate the struggle before you can really appreciate uh, the success. And it will come. Have faith. It will come. So going into this week, guys, uh, I want to give the Bulls a very, very small rope. Um, benefit of the doubt in the first hour of the day. But if we start losing candles and we start confirming to the downside, again, trust the process, trust technical analysis. Guys, I love you all. God bless and have, have an awesome, awesome trading week. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.